just when you thought you could turn your back and walk away. The dark cloud of human indignity follows you. You have no choice but to turn and look it in the eye. It's the sex offender hit list. Story now in Tyler, where a man has been arrested for exposing himself in a beauty store parking lot. According to an arrest affidavit, Jacob Reeves, who is a convicted sex offender, pulled up to a Ulta beauty parking space back in June next to a woman applying makeup in her car and then started to touch himself. After running into the vehicle on the road again, the woman was able to take a picture of the car's license plate and reported it to police. Once officers ran the plate numbers and the woman's description of the suspect, police identified Reeves as the man who allegedly committed the act. Reams is now behind bars inside the Smith County Jail in charge with indecent exposure. Back at 640, Customs and Border Patrol agents at Dulles Airport arrested two Salvadoran men wanted on felony rape charges. Officials say they arrested Oscar Hernandez Mata and Carlos Osorto Molina last week. They were trying to flee to El Salvador, according to authorities. Hernandez Mata is wanted on rape charges in Montgomery County, while Orsoto Molina is wanted on rape charges in Prince George's County. Australia launches its first national campaign encouraging children to speak up against sexual abuse today. The $22.4 million campaign titled One Talk at a Time features a series of ads which adults initiate talks with children to encourage them to speak out against abuse. Attorney General Mark Dreyfus says he is particularly you know, proud of this campaign, okay which has received support from victims and survivors. The campaign will run across the electronic media until mid next year. Let's head over to Summit County, Ohio. A 72-year-old Macedonia man pled guilty to several sex charges Tuesday, some involving children, according to the Summit County Prosecutor's Office. A release from the prosecutor's office said that William Lupica Jr. pled guilty to the following charges. Two counts of rape, two counts of gross sexual imposition, two counts of pandering sexually oriented matter involving a minor, seven counts of illegal use of a minor and a nudity oriented material. So according to court documents, the crimes happened between 2018 and 2019. Lupica Jr.'s wife babysat dozens of kids at their Macedonia home for decades. And of course, this is where this abuse stems from. His wife faces no charges as she had no involvement and didn't even know about it. The prosecutor's office said Lapika Jr.'s sentencing will take place November 21st. Now tonight, the FBI Salt Lake Division is asking any potential sexual abuse victims of this man, James Kirby King, to come forward. This after he was indicted on several charges in federal court today. Good Tuesday evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is John Martin King, a Billings man, pleaded not guilty to an indictment of 20 charges related to sex crimes on the Fort Belknap Reservation, dating back 31 years. The 57-year-old man is facing charges of child sexual abuse, child sexual exploitation, aggravated sexual abuse, possession of child pornography in Indian country, and other related crimes. The U.S. Attorney Office alleges from 1992 to 2018, King sexually abused and attempted to sexually abuse minor children and adults. He's also accused of drugging his victims in order to abuse them. Now, if convicted of the most serious crimes, King faces a maximum of life imprisonment and a $250,000 fine. The FBI also says King has lived in multiple locations throughout Montana, including Billings, Ashland and the Northern Cheyenne Reservation. They also say he has been employed in positions including work in a school setting and as a juvenile probation officer. Again, if you are a victim or have knowledge of sexual abuse committed by King, you're asked to contact the FBI's Haver Residence Agency. The number there on your screen, 406-265-7181 or complete their questionnaire. We do have a link to that questionnaire 
on our website. A convicted sex offender who police say has breached his probation orders in the past has been released. And Abbotsford police are notifying residents Hugh Alexander McCurry will be living in their city. The 46-year-old man has a lengthy criminal history, including multiple past convictions for sexual offenses against children. He has lifetime bans from places where children may be around, like playgrounds, community centers, pools, and parks. If you see him breaking those conditions, you should call Abbotsford police immediately. A former Vermilion Parish Sheriff's deputy was found guilty on multiple charges of rape, sexual battery, and molestation of a juvenile. Yesterday, District Judge Thomas Frederick found Brian Kibito guilty of two counts of first-degree rape, sexual battery, and molestation of a juvenile, which occurred from 2016 through 2019. The case involved three juvenile victims who testified at the trial, in addition to testimony by Louisiana State Police investigators. At the time of his arrest, Kibito served almost 18 years with the agency. He was indicted on 23 sex crimes charges in April of 2019. A Sergeant Bluff man is in custody on suspicion of providing alcohol to two minor females and touching them inappropriately. This is Eric Sedano, he's a 27 year old. He was booked into the Woodbury County Jail on two counts each of lascivious acts with a child and supplying alcohol to a minor, as well as one count of disorderly conduct. A Sergeant Bluff police officer stopped at a disturbance at about 4.30 p.m. Friday after witnessing several people in the street yelling at each other. According to court documents, a man told the officer his girlfriend's daughter and her friend were inside the house and had called friends telling them that they were drunk and a man in there was trying to have sexual relations with them. The man's wife then exited the house followed shortly by two girls. The woman told officers her house was locked and her one-year-old baby was inside with Mr. Sedano here. She told officers she had witnessed Sedano on the couch with the two girls cuddling and fondling them. Sedano wouldn't answer the officers at the door and a police tactical unit had to enter the house and take him into custody. Cleveland police officer is facing child pornography charges. 32 year old Brandon Kreitz of Parma has been indicted on one count of receipt and distribution of child pornography and possession of child pornography. Authorities say during his time as a Cleveland police patrolman, he received and distributed numerous images of minors engaged in sexually explicit conduct. He had a laptop and hard drives with child porn on them between 2022 and 2023. The case will go to federal court following an FBI investigation. The priest on Garcia will plead guilty to sexually abusing a teenage girl in a court tomorrow. The Philadelphia District Attorney's Office says he is expected to deliver a victim impact statement. She, the victim, will deliver that statement. Authorities arrested and charged Garcia back in 2019. He was a pastor at St. Martin of Tours in Oxford Circle, but alleged the alleged crime took place between 2014 and 2017 at the Immaculate Heart of Mary in Andorra. The archdiocese put Garcia on an administrative leave when the criminal investigation began in 2018. A West Mifflin man is facing child pornography charges. The Allegheny County Sheriff's Office says Matthew Lee engaged with a detective on an online site called Meet Me. During their conversation, Lee told the detective that he was able to send sexually explicit videos and photos of a four-year-old. Detectives were able to trace the IP address and issued a search warrant of Lee's home. He's facing multiple charges, including sexual abuse of children and the sharing of child pornography. A man wanted for a sexual offense against a child has been arrested in Zapata County, according to authorities. This is Mario De Jesus Salinas. He was recently served with warrants for two counts of aggravated sexual child continuous, a first uh, degree felony. The warrants were out of the Starr County Sheriff's Office. With assistance from the U.S. Border Patrol Intelligence Unit, Zapata County Sheriff's Office deputies located Salinas at the Oso Blanco Lodge in Zapata. He was arrested and taken into custody without incident. Salinas was then handed over to the Star County deputies. A 40-year-old Andrew Brendan Dickerson of Baudette, Minnesota, is facing another child porn charge. Dickerson was currently on probation for a prior felony conviction of possessing and disseminating pornography involving minors. 
According to court documents, a September probation check of his phone allegedly found uh, nude photos of female children in sexually suggestive positions while displaying breasts and genitalia. During an interview with an investigator, Dickerson admitted to viewing child pornography but denied disseminating it. He's been charged with felony possession of pornographic work involving a minor. It's a charge that carries a maximum sentence of 10 years in prison. I'm Neil Carlson reporting for inews.tv. Parents, this is an important story you need to see. A babysitter just charged with raping the kids he was supposed to be watching. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Tiffany Tucker. I'm Brian Duffy. Police say there could be more victims out there. At 4 o'clock, you heard how this man allegedly found his victims. Updated information, new at 6 now. Harry Boomer live with what parents should be looking for if they think their child may be one of them. That is right, uh, Brian and Tiffany. You know, finding someone to take care of your kids is not easy. And not even family sometimes is the right choice. But this guy really is the wrong choice. According to police, he did the unthinkable. He became a child rapist. This person put their information up as kind of like an advertisement of the services they offer. Timothy Luna has been arrested, indicted, and charged with horrific crimes. Police say the crimes related to the time he spent as a babysitter. This indictment is a combination of charges from the three known juvenile victims from the Cuyahoga and Summit County cases. His alleged victims, ages 6, 9, and 13. He's charged with six counts of rape, gross sexual imposition, and importuning, which is soliciting minors under 13 to engage in sexual activity. The Summit County Prosecutor's Office say parents became aware of him from his social media activity. It doesn't have their, their history. It doesn't have what type of person they are. Luna posted on the care.com website. Check out what it says. Quote, Care.com does not employ any caregiver and is not responsible for the conduct of any user of our site. Parma Heights Detective Adam Sloan is warning parents to be alert and watchful. Signs of abuse can be different with every child. Things to pay attention to would be certain behaviors your child does not normally engage in and anything your child does not normally say. They could also express knowledge of certain terminology and or acts that someone their age would not and should not normally be aware of. The 25-year-old's alleged crimes cover a large part of Northeast Ohio, from Summit County to here in Cuyahoga County, one in Akron, another in Coventry, and a third in Parma Heights. You need to be careful with who you're dealing with because anybody can put a picture up on the internet, right? Anybody can throw a name out there. That's right, and this guy uh, apparently did just that, uh, Timothy Luna. Now, Parma Heights Police say he's in jail now, but there may be other victims, as uh, you, Brian, and Tiffany have said. If that is the situation, if you even suspected, call them, get it checked out, so he can stay behind bars as long as is necessary. In Parma Heights, I'm Harry Boomer, 19 News. A Brown County fast food manager is facing multiple charges for allegedly assaulting underage female workers at two different restaurants. 37-year-old Joshua Johnson had an initial appearance scheduled on nine counts, including repeated sexual assault of the same child. According to the criminal complaint, three 15-year-olds reported to have been sexually assaulted by Johnson. Johnson worked at fast food restaurants in Howard and Bellevue. His next court appearance is on November 10th. Deal Island, Maryland. The Somerset County Sheriff's Office has arrested a Deal Island man on alleged sexual abuse of a minor, as well as other charges. Police say the criminal investigation section provided evidence of James Stevens, a 76-year-old, engaged in child abuse and sexual child abuse in the late 70s up to the mid-80s. Stevens has been charged with four counts of child abuse, second-degree sex offense, third-degree sex offense, and perverted practice. Stevens was arrested on October 20th and is being held without bond at the Somerset County Detention Center. We're jumping right into some breaking news right now. A former teacher at the center of a sex scandal with a student. 13 Action News first broke this story on KTMB.com. Right now, 13 Action News reporter David Schumann just finished digging into more of what's behind it all. David. Well, new in the last hour, we found out this whole thing came to light because of a tip. 
Police tell us they've been looking into Robin Gentile since they heard back in December that something sketchy had been happening. Gentile is a former substitute teacher at Harney Middle School, but the student involved didn't attend that school. We found out within the last half hour that the former substitute teacher is set for her first court appearance tomorrow morning. David Schumann, 13 Action News. Thank you, David. And staying in crime news, another suspect in the Ouachita Parish child sex trafficking investigation has been arrested. On, fe on February 9th, officials of the Ouachita Parish Sheriff's Office began an investigation on a theft complaint that took place at a convenience store on Cypress Street in West Monroe. Authorities learned that over $1,000 worth of alcohol was stolen by four suspects. Then in a separate investigation, deputies went on to learn that a 15-year-old victim was sex trafficked and involved in pornography for approximately two years. According to the affidavit, sexual activities were allegedly facilitated by DeMartavius Baker and Shamidra Hunter. Deputies learned that the victim had sexual intercourse with Hunter and Baker after the victim initially met the duo. In October 17th, Harper was arrested and charged with trafficking children for sex. Oklawaha, Florida, the Marion County Sheriff's Office arrested a man accused of sexually battering a 13-year-old girl in the Ocala National Forest. Norman Gribble, 57-year-old was arrested on the charge of sexual battery of a child 12 years age or younger on Friday, or excuse me, older. The arrest comes about a year and a half after the University of Florida Child Protection Team interviewed the victim. During the interview, the victim recounted the battery which happened during the summer of 21 while on vacation in the Ocala National Forest. The girl explained that Gribble invited her over to his camper and then forced her to engage in oral sex. Once the victim was able to get away, she told other adults who said they didn't believe her claims. Detectives were unable to immediately locate Gribble after deciding to arrest him. He has since been booked into the Marion County Jail on no bond. Other news tonight, Maine's Department of Public Safety is reviewing its entire process of tracking sex offenders after one managed to slip through the cracks in Cornville. That's right, a public safety spokesman blames a clerical error for the mistake. WMTW News 8's Paul Merrill joins us now live. So, Paul, is this an isolated incident? Tracy, right now, public safety officials really don't know the answer to that question. They are supposed to be keeping track of 3,000 registered sex offenders throughout the entire state of Maine, and right now we know of at least one they lost track of. 53 year old Lauren Armstrong, an unemployed truck driver and failed country music star, was caught chasing down children at a Cornville Elementary School on Wednesday morning. After reportedly hopping the fence and removing his clothing, he allegedly hid in the bushes and waited for recess. There's absolutely no doubt in my mind that he was doing something lewd and inappropriate behind the trees. This disturbing footage shot on a student's smartphone shows him pursuing a child who narrowly manages to escape after Armstrong reportedly became winded and passed out due to his obesity and habitual chain smoking. Armstrong is a convicted sex offender who was arrested in a 2008 Dateline Predator sting and again in 2019 after spending seven years in a sex offender treatment class that he hasn't been able to pass. In addition to Armstrong's prior convictions, reports of dozens of allegations including stalking, drunk driving, animal and domestic abuse, transmitting explicit material over the internet, and repeated failure to comply with terms of probation. The residents of Cornville say they've had enough and are finally speaking out. How dare you put them people in our neighborhood? What is wrong with you? You are our elected officials. How did you let this happen? How did you let this happen? You should be ashamed. You don't want them there. That's why you didn't put them there. No, because we didn't put them there. Obviously, it is, it is not settled well with this neighborhood, and, and it may be something we have to look at. You're not the good guys when you put the wolf in the sheep like this. This is not right. You need to fix it. It's just really scary to know that he was that close to the kids on two different, three different campuses, actually. It does not sit well at all. I don't want my daughter around that. Not one little bit. Also speaking out, a deputy from the Scohegan Police Department. I don't know if there's anything that could have prevented this other than putting barbed wire and larger fences. And a Hollywood celebrity and longtime Armstrong supporter who had this to say about the incident. Does it bother me? Nah. Is it burnt into my memory like a horrible scar? Nah. Well, maybe just a little bit. Public safety spokesman Steve McCausland says a clerical error caused Armstrong's case to fall through the cracks. Now state officials are trying to figure out exactly what went wrong. We're going to review the entire system because of this case, yes. And as far as all those other allegations that have gone unnoticed, 
Right now, is there any way to know that Armstrong isn't doing this all over the state? We don't know. I don't have any numbers for you, Paul, but uh, obviously I suspect this is not an isolated incident. We reached out to Armstrong at Somerset County Jail for comment. He had only this to say. I am not a fucking sex offender. I never would have fucking done anything to, to any kid. I, I wouldn't have been able to. I am not a sex offender. Reporting live from Cornville, this is Paul Merrill, WMTW Paul. News 8. There's an urgent search underway for a dangerous escaped prisoner in Greenville, Tennessee. Sean Williams facing 21 counts of sex crimes against children. Authorities say he broke out of a transport van on his way to federal court, kicking out the rear window. He reportedly used parts of the van's headrest to remove his restraints. A Grand Island man is now charged after his granddaughter reported that he sexually assaulted her. Local force choosing not to name the suspect to protect the identity of the victims. The 76-year-old man faces two counts of first-degree sexual assault of a child, two counts of child abuse, as well as strangulation. Police say the seven-year-old reported the assault during a forensic interview, adding that it happened in front of the victim's brother. The girl told police her grandfather covered her nose and mouth, restricting her breathing, and used other forms of physical abuse. His next court date is October 23rd. Over to Oregon, Illinois. An Oregon man was arrested on Saturday on accusations that he possessed child sexual abuse material. This is Chris Stubblefield, a 32-year-old. He's expected to appear in court Monday for a detention hearing, according to the Ogle County Sheriff's Office. Stubblefield was arrested following a months-long investigation by Ogle County detectives, and on October 12th, a search warrant was executed at his residence, and he was subsequently arrested. Good afternoon. A man who admitted to inappropriately touching a child will spend a decade behind bars. Brian Callahan was in front of Judge Joseph Montano for a sentencing hearing this morning. Back in May, he took a deal pleading guilty to criminal sexual contact with a minor under 13 years old, having 17 other charges, including 14 for manufacturing child pornography, dropped. Judge Joseph Montano sentenced Callahan to 10 years. Edmond Police Internet Crimes Against Children track down and arrest a man accused of aggravated possession of child pornography. Officers say this man, Sonny Cop, was caught with explicit images and videos of children in Edmond and Grove, Oklahoma. Cop is inside the Delaware County Detention Center while this investigation continues. News where you live. Five News starts with breaking news. Breaking up for a Lowell police officer is fired after being charged with sexual assault and court records say the victim in this case is a minor. Thanks for joining us. I'm Alexandra Burnley. Darren has the week off. Arkansas State Police say ex-Lowell officer Roy Mitchell was charged with two counts of sex second degree sexual assault. ASP says the 45 year old was immediately fired from the Lowell Police Department after the arrest and then he was taken to the Washington County Jail. ASP's criminal investigation division opened an investigation on September 22nd following a call to the ASP crimes against children division hotline. The Lowell Police Department placed Mitchell on administrative leave at that time. We'll keep you updated as we learn more. Cash bond was set at $200,000 Monday for a man accused of multiple sexual assaults of children. Adam Henning, 44-year-old, faces two charges in Washara County and made a bond appearance Monday. He returns to court November 21st for a formal initial appearance to court records show. According to a news release, the Watoma Police Department was notified of a reported sexual assault of a child on October 14th. The Washara County Human Services assisted with multiple victim-sensitive interviews through which Henning was identified as the suspect. In an interview with the Watoma Police, Henning admitted to multiple acts of sexual assault with different victims that occurred from 2018 up until now and was subsequently arrested. Henning has been charged by the Washara County District Attorney's Office with sexual assault of a child under 13 years of age and repeated acts of sexual assault of a child. You need to burn, buddy. Kansas News Leader. Welcome back. A motorcycle ride and fundraiser were held today in honor of five-year-old Zoe Felix. 13's Callie Holtis was there to hear from participants. 
Dozens of bikers gathered at Victoria's Bar in southeast Topeka before heading off on the ride for Zoe Sunday afternoon. I mean, it makes me feel really good to know the community came together. They put aside their differences, their opinions, and they came out to support not only Zoe, but other kids who have went through the same experiences. Aside from raising awareness for cases like Zoe's, the ride is also helping raise funds for Lifehouse Child Advocacy Center and Zoe's school. You know, Lifehouse provides services to child victims of crime. Um, and this ride hopefully will bring even more awareness to the community um, about child victims of crime um, and how we as a community can help. Organizers say they hope the money will be used to show kids that they are loved. I just hope they use it on kids that need school supplies, kids that need lunches, kids that just need somebody to show that they love them because that's what every kid wants. They just want somebody to love them. They had one final message to leave with the community. If you see something, say something. Do what's right. Um, even though something may be tough, make the right choices because one day you'll regret something if you don't do something about it. In Topeka, Callie Holthouse, 13 News. Callie, thanks for covering that. The Emporia Fire Department celebrated one... Starting your news tonight, a man from Clinton is facing charges involving the alleged sexual assault of a minor under 12 years old. According to Clinton police, Christopher Connors was arrested on Friday after a grand jury indicted him earlier in the week. Police say this is the result of a months long investigation and Connors is currently being held at the Kennebunk County Jail on a $100,000 cash bail. We are starting 10 TV news at noon today, though, with some breaking news. A Norwich Township firefighter arrested on a child sexual abuse material charge has now resigned, and that's according to the fire chief there in Norwich Township. 22 year old Caden Woodward was arrested last week. Court documents show that the incident happened in September. What you see here is video of the arrest. According to Franklin County Municipal Court documents, a Hilliard police detective got a tip about a cash app account receiving money for sexually explicit material. The account was being run by a 17 year old girl. After issuing a subpoena, chat logs revealed conversations between Woodward allegedly inquiring about a secret menu. Let's head over to Conway, South Carolina. A Conway man was arrested for a criminal sexual conduct with a victim under the age of 16, according to a warrant from Conway Police Department. Stephen Wayne is charged with criminal sexual conduct with a minor second degree. Warren said the sexual conduct happened over the course of more than a year, beginning in April of 22, up until October 16th of this year. It's not specified here, but Wayne was acting as a guardian to the minor child. The DSS submitted a written statement and the appropriate paperwork was sent to the Conway Police Department. Wayne now remains incarcerated at the Reuben Long Detention Center, awaiting a hearing. A former teacher in the Valley is facing charges tonight accused of sexually abusing students on and off campus. New court documents claim 37-year-old Daniel Goman gave his personal cell phone number to students, sending sexually explicit text messages. The history teacher resigned in 2015 after school leaders caught wind of the inappropriate communication. Now police say two former students are coming forward claiming Goman sexually assaulted them. According to court documents, one incident happened inside his classroom, the other at a Phoenix hotel. Okay, we've got an update on this story. The story, by the way, is about a year old. Daniel Goman here, he's now 39. He was sentenced Friday in court after the former university high school teacher pled guilty to three counts of attempted sexual conduct with a minor. The Maricopa County Attorney's Office only took about eight years to finally get this guy sentenced to a whopping two and a half years in prison. How is that justice? Coach and principal Philip Coons was charged in Jefferson County Tuesday with outraging public decency. That's a misdemeanor. OSBI says nearly a dozen players came forward with allegations of abuse, saying Coach Coons made the team strip down naked and do their exercise without clothing on. Also, some players had injuries. We're working on a novel. Uh, <laughs> it's just about like writing a novel. He should never be allowed to teach again in the state of Oklahoma. He's a danger to children. He's proven that in three or four different schools. Some parents wonder why Coach Coons was not charged with felony child abuse. Jefferson County District Attorney refused to answer that question because of the ongoing investigation and prosecution. Well, this just goes to show you that once they start, they never stop. 
This is a 92-year-old Quincy man. He's facing child sexual assault charges. He's pled guilty to one of the counts in a settlement with prosecutors. This is Lionel Surratt. He was in Adams County Circuit Court Friday where he pled guilty to one count of aggravated criminal sexual abuse. The plea was part of a settlement with prosecutors who dropped a more serious Class X count of predatory criminal sexual assault. Surratt was set to go on trial November 6th, but will now be sentenced December 4th. He was indicted in July by an Adams County grand jury, and the indictment said that the crimes involved a victim under 13 and happened in October of 2020. Surratt was arrested in mid-June at his home by police, but he's now free on a $75,000 bond. Orlando, Florida. A Florida man's been sentenced to 80 years in federal prison for the production and distribution of child sexual abuse material. The United States Attorney's Office also said Michael Van S. Jr., a 39-year-old here, will serve a lifetime of supervised release if he makes it out. Authorities said the investigation began when Van S. uploaded child sex abuse material involving young children to a social media group. They got a search warrant for his phone and found evidence showing Vanessa had sexually abused a 14-year-old victim himself over a period of seven months. Vanessa of Claremont, Florida was arrested for sexual battery and lewd and lascivious molestation in Lake County in February, and he pled guilty in federal court on July 21st. See ya, chomo. Kim isn't going to be able to watch you tonight. Mr. Roberts from next door said you could come to his house. Mommy, I don't want to go over there. Mr. Roberts was nice enough to watch you. Please, Mommy. I don't want to go. I'm sorry, honey. I don't have anybody else to watch you. Oh, Mommy. Let's go. I'm, I'm running late. She never listens. Remember, don't tell anybody about this. I'm not gonna believe you anyway. And if you do tell somebody, they're probably gonna take you away from your mommy. You're gonna be all alone. Take the time to listen to your child. It only takes a minute. Nothing is more important.